Hello there. In this video, we will discuss the application of a very important concept, correlation, on the GMAT. Comprehending correlation is essential for interpreting data in a range of GMAT questions, particularly in table analysis questions, which is found in the Data Insights section of the GMAT Focus Edition. As you know, correlation is something that measures the relationship between two variables. So, for example, positive correlation is defined as a correlation which, which indicates that the two variables move in the same direction. If one of them increases, the other increases. If one decreases, the other decreases as well. Similarly, we have negative correlation which means that the two variables move in opposite directions. One increases, the other decreases. And Converse is also true. And finally, no correlation was the third type, which is where there is no discernible pattern between the movements of the two variables. Anything could be going just about anywhere. Now, inferring correlation between two entities when data is presented in the form of a table, in a, in a lot of values that are there in different cells of a table, this in data table analysis questions, it requires a specialized process. This is the process that we built in another video and I'm linking this up for you. That is where we discussed correlation in detail. This is the step we learned there and through a question we had refined, we had slowly built the process. So I'm going to go over this slowly with you one more time. Just a quick summary. First, you will identify which two data sets you are even looking at. What is What are the two variables between which you want to see correlation? Right. Once you identify them, you actually have two columns in your table. Then you will sort one column out of those. The other one will stay as is. Now you will observe the other column and try to see the direction in which it is moving, for which you will split this second column into two halves. There, say these are all of the values. You will have a top half and you will have a bottom half. Then by looking at the general magnitude of values here, the bigger values, smaller values, which half has what kind of values, using all of this, you will infer the correlation between these two data sets. Okay? Again, if you do not remember this or if you haven't seen that first video, you can go back and build that process first. Now, right now, we are going to do this on an official question. This is your question. Here is your question text on top and then you also have the table. So, first, just pause the video and read everything that's given to you. Then I'll show you what is the question even asking. All right. I hope you read. So, what is the situation about? There's something that a dietitian is saying. A, the dietitian is saying that some oils are better suited for cooking at high heat than others. So, depending on the heat that you have to give to your food, the heat required to cook something, that's how you should decide which oil you will go for. And there are these four pointers that were given that if something is to be cooked at no heat or low or medium or high heat, what are the oils that you can use for that, which is what was given in the table as well. Here, the first one is your type. Now, since you read, you would know that R is for refined oils and the unrefined, that's your U here in the first column. Then the second column has just the names of different types of oils. And this is the temperature, which also comes with the heat type. So, you know, you see the three, the four categories here, no, low, medium and high. That is what is also written here in your, in, in this column, high, no, medium, low. These are the four repeated uh, values. Then you have two other columns as well. One is talking about amount and then it says ml because this is what the amount of each oil per container. That means when you buy one container of this oil, how many milliliters are there in it? So, for example, if you talk about coconut oil, then one container that you buy, it will have 250 ml of oil in it. And similarly for the others, while the last column is talking about the price for that amount. Price for that amount simply means this is price for one container, right? So, the coconut oil I just talked about, that one container will be for 8 
dollars this is all that is given to us and now here is your question now there are three statements but the one that is connected with correlation the idea we are trying to learn here is statement three so just pause your video and try only and only statement three Okay. Now you see this statement is talking about strong positive correlation between two things. Thing one is the amount per container in ml and thing two is the price for the container in dollars. So these are the two things between which we need correlation. So we'll go to the table and see which are the columns that make sense. So which are the ones which are really being talked about here. And you will clearly be able to identify them. Amount per container in ml. Well, this is the this is the column here the amount column and the other one price per amount that was price per container so see how the words are not exactly the same you have to make those minor translations to be able to see that okay this part in the statement is the same as this table header this column header so this is your second column Okay, now we'll only focus on these two columns. So look at it here. My two columns of interest are the last two and this is item one item two data set one and two and this completes the first step in my process identifying the data set now what is the second step the second step is to sort any one data set so you can take any one of these columns and sort so if i choose the amount column for example the first one i will sort this by clicking here which will lead to all of these values coming in ascending order for me so i should have the smallest value on top and the greatest value down below and what happens when you really do that this is what you're going to get now your amount column here the first one is perfectly sorted you see that now these values here are in ascending order this completes step two of your process we put a tick mark here now what's your third step after you've sorted the data as well in one column now you want to decide the assess the directionality of the other column the other data set right so let's put this of other data set so this is where i will now look at the second data set and see what is it that's happening to the values now what is the step we follow for that we do not look at every single data value instead we split this entire column into two halves so you have a lot of values here where will you split it say about here this is where a split happens these are half of the values on top and these are about half of the values down below now when you look at all of these values look what's happening the top half that you have it has 13 8 14.5 20 18 it has big values pretty big values but when you look at the bottom half it has just 114 and 112 everything else is below 10 so when we look at this we can tell that the the top half has greater values compared to the bottom half you are always interested only in looking at the overall trend you will never fixate on specific specific values you can just see how there are a lot of two digit numbers here in the top half compared to the second half that mainly has single digit numbers now using this what i can tell is that my price per amount column actually has a general decreasing trend as i'm going here so this arrow is just to show you that the greater values are on top so while column one was increasing as you went down column two was decreasing as you went down this clearly shows that they are changing in opposite directions and what does that mean for you opposite directions would always indicate negative correlation so this way then you've done this third part by doing it in two steps there was step three for you which was split the second column into two halves and then after you see that part you infer correlation so both of these things 
happened here. Now finally, see how we followed the exact same steps that we built in the previous video and following them with precision, we could see that we have a very clear answer. It's negative correlation between these two quantities. Even though, even though there are inconsistencies in the data, it's not as if it's always going down, right? The values are not always going down, but still the general trend is hinting at that. This kind of analysis is invaluable for GMAT table analysis questions where quickly identifying trends and correlations can save crucial time and enhance accuracy. Do check out the earlier video if you haven't watched this and let us know if you have any questions about this at all. We'd be happy to help. Happy learning!